Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining our legislative link up uh, with the New Center for the Study of Occupational Regulation. My name is Alana Wilson, and I'm the Vice President of Government Affairs and Public Relations. Uh, this is our first in person interview with a legislator, which I'm particularly excited about, and I'll let him introduce himself. Good morning. Um... Senator Wayne Lagerholtz. I represent the 35th Senatorial District, which is include, includes Cambria County, Bedford County, and Clearfield County. Thank you so much for taking the time out to speak Thank with you. us today. I really appreciate it. Uh, let's dive right into it. So first, I want to ask you just the general question. What got you into occupational regulation and occupational licensing reform? Uh, being the uh, the chair of the Senate Education Committee uh, and, and being able to meet with the different stakeholders and talk with our superintendents as well as all the other stakeholders across the education spectrum and you know, just uh, my mantra of being open and accessible to what makes sense and what works and what will help our uh, educators as well as help ultimately our children within the Commonwealth. Uh, it was brought to my attention and also one of my colleagues in the Senate, Sen Senator Cameron Bartolotta, and I co-sponsored a, a bill dealing with uh, teacher certifications and uh, and licensing. And we were seeing that since uh, around 2009, I think it was, there was a drop of about 71% of, of teachers within the Commonwealth. And we wanted to uh, take a look at that and see you know, how we can address that to, to help uh, recruit or maybe you know entice more out-of-state uh, educators to come into into our Commonwealth to be able to teach, mindful that we don't just want to open the doors and say anybody can come in and teach. There has to be specific criteria that is met uh, and dealt with accordingly. And what we were finding was that there was kind of some some barriers for out-of-state teachers to come in. And while it's to say that they were, you know, educated, they were experienced, and they were uh, you know ready to be able to do that, but they had to take certain specific Pennsylvania content uh, specific areas to focus on. So. We uh, drafted this bill, uh, has bipartisan support, and uh, looks to hopefully make an impact on that to allow, you know, these teachers that are out of state. Maybe they've, maybe you've had a teacher that's taught for 15, 20 years, and they're looking to, you know, move or downsize or retire, what, what have you, and they, they like Pennsylvania, and maybe they don't want to go back and have to, you know, it's been some time since they've taken the the exams or taken the requirements, so this kind of is a, not a substitute, but, but but kind of a substitute for you know, their experience for being able to teach here in the Commonwealth. Well, you made my next question pretty easy. Let's dive into the bill. So Senate Bill 1325, uh, and, you know, co-sponsored, like you said, with Senator Barlotta. Can you give me a little more detail about the actual bill? And did COVID play a part in really bringing this to the forefront? Or was it something you've always kind of seen an issue with? Uh, it's you know something that we heard about, but I think kind of COVID kind of uh, highlighted some of these. Not I want to say highlighted, but kind of brought to light some of these these areas that we're seeing concerns with, and that being one of them. You know, there's other issues. You know, with the broadband access and things of that nature, where we're trying to ensure that our students are, you know, are able to learn in these very uncertain times. So, and what the bill would do, in, you know, simple 1325 will uh, allow other uh, out-of-state teachers to uh, to come into the Commonwealth, you know, provided that there's a, about three different uh, subsets of what they'd be required to do, just their experience. And if they have a Pennsylvania equivalent area, uh, Pennsylvania equivalent content tests requiring in their certifying state or field. So it's, you know, maybe taking it away just specifically, you know, you need Pennsylvania, 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 but you have other experience in another state that is very similar to what we're teaching here. Right. And, and that's got to be approved and it, you know, it's got to be uh, satisfactory to, to our Department of Education, which makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I'd love to say that you're, I, or I guess I would venture to say that you have a personal interest as well. You have young children who are in the Pennsylvania public school system. And so this is an issue that you find personal as well, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yes. We have, uh, my wife and I have three daughters, eighth, ninth, and 10th grade. So uh, we're busy. At <laughs> it's great. Yeah. No, they're, they're really good girls. They are. Um, so just backing up a little bit for the general uh, speaks of occupational licensing. Um, some advocates believe that the right to earn a living is the baseline for occupational licensing. What do you agree or disagree? Do you think other reforms are necessary? Where do, where do you see the Commonwealth kind of going with this? Yeah, yes, I, I understand. I think you kind of see a, uh, 
maybe a slight move in this area because you understand that we want to enact regulations or laws to make sure that the people that are in these professions that require the occupational license are qualified and able to provide for the safety no matter what you know area that they're dealing with but at the same time you don't want to make it so overly you know burdensome to be able to you know make a living and you need to i think it's easy to continue to to write legislation to address areas or try to think that you may be able to do this to to put it in an occupational license reform package or what have you without with losing sight of the extreme number of steps that you must go through to uh to obtain you know that license and i can speak personally to my wife just recently became a nurse practitioner oh. and i can tell you the, the process that she went through and i understand you know why it needs done because you know she's at the end of the day has a lot of the patient's lives in her hands and that's and i get that but there are certain areas that we can look at that might be redundant that still accomplish the same goal so you know it's it's good to look at that it's always good to review you know what we've passed and to keep it uh, current and up to date and make sure that the occupational licensing is really meeting the needs of that that core function of providing for the safety but at the same time you know not making it overly burdensome absolutely um uh congratulations to your wife i know she's been working on that for some time so uh, that's fantastic. I know that right now, it's funny you mentioned nurse licensing or nurse practitioner licensing um, in the house, so you haven't seen it yet. There's House Bill 100 that's coming up that's to expand the scope of practice of nurse licensure pra practitioners or nurse practitioners, so I apologize. Um, and I, I'm really curious about bipartisan support and the professional licensure committee should be hitting the house floor for a second consideration next week. It's, um, and I'm really, really curious to see how that goes, especially with rural areas, yes. as you were saying. So, yes, absolutely. Um, that And in that, I believe there may even be a companion Senate bill mm -hmm. uh, with that. I know it was a co-sponsor with And actually, actually I think uh, Senator Barlotta was the prime sponsor of that bill in the Senate. And that's something, yeah, that we would look to that would fit yes. in with uh, also with, you know, telemedicine or things of that nature that can allow our rural communities to, to benefit. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of that, like we know about that bill. Are there any other bills coming down the pike in Pennsylvania to help with occupational licensing reform? We actually did just, we were in session this past week here, and we actually did just pass a bill, Senate Bill Senate Bill 1268, which was sponsored by Senator Judy Ward, mm -hmm. who's directly to the east of me as Altoona, Blair, you know, Blair County. And that would uh, le lessen some requirements for certified nurse aides because okay. what we were seeing with especially, you know, with this this pandemic, these frontline workers were there was a, a dire need for their services, and uh, they were you know being thrust into this uncertain time, and then to come back and have them required to go back through these licensing requirements, allowing this as a substitute the experience that they're getting, which was very real. I mean, yeah. you know, experience that hopefully, hope to God, we don't ever have to to deal with again, but that to to ease the transition to allow them because they've been on the job and then allow them to uh to be certified well i really want to thank you for championing common sense legislation in the commonwealth for expanding economic opportunity to those uh in occupational licensing fields i think that's extremely extremely important and um having senators getting bipartisan support in, in the commonwealth which i find to be uh pretty common, I feel like, in the Commonwealth when it comes to occupational licensing. It's like it's a no-brainer across the board. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, obviously we're very divisive times right now, but this is the thing that really brings people together. And so I thank you for, you know, championing that and continue to push common sense legislation, especially, I, I would venture to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but two out of three of your counties are pretty rural. I mean, Canberra County is obviously rural as compared to like Allegheny, Philadelphia, Montgomery, However, compared to Bedford and Clearfield, a little less. So you have some pretty rural counties. Um, do you foresee anything else that may happen with the Commonwealth, with, with occupational licensing reform? These bills are really picking up. So I, I just want to see, do you see anything else happening? Or uh, One bill that, that I'll continue to advocate for and has actually got vetoed was the telemedicine bill, which I think could really, uh, really change the landscape here and it maybe doesn't deal directly with occupational licensing but in some capacity it would because you're allowing uh providers to see so many patients and, and we were confident with that bill and it would pass the house pass senate bipartisan support again and, and for whatever reason the governor vetoed it 
but we'll continue to push and advocate for that uh, at the next legislative session because that is a bill that really could impact those people that are in you know northern bedford county northern clearfield county that don't have access or, or can't drive you know three four hours to get to a major urban area yeah absolutely um well this was quick and easy and i appreciate it so much um do you, is there any way that your constituents can follow these bills or follow you and what you're doing you want to tell yeah them? they can uh, follow my website uh, my facebook page or call the office yeah and, you have a great uh, and stay up to date staff. I have, to, I have to give you a shout out to Kelly and A. Maria who helped me set this up and, and Donna also who helped me set this all up. Uh, really fantastic office staff guys and thanks. I'm very fortunate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us today with our legislative link up. And if you guys have any questions, you know how to get in touch with uh, the Senator. We'll also attach his uh, Facebook as well as contact information to this post. Uh, please reach out if you guys have any questions, comments about occupational licensing. Thank you so much. See you.